morning. Today, the prayers of joy and concern. This week, we ask you to please keep Larry and Anne Gaskin and Connie Hodgson in your prayers. Sympathy and prayers to the family of Don McGilvery, who passed away on December the 12th. He operated our sound system for many years. There will be a celebration of life sometime in the spring. This week, we pray for Vernon, Pastoral Charge, Vernon, Ontario, and New Life Community Church. And in the life and work of the church, we want to thank everyone for generously supporting the adopt the family this year. We were able to supply everything needed for our family as listed by the Bernadette McCann House and help a number of other families as well. There's a potluck following the service today and everyone is welcome. The stewards meeting will be on December the 18th at 7 p.m. The Christmas Eve service is December the 24th at 7 p.m. And on Christmas Day, no service. And on Sunday, December the 31st, it is at 10 a.m. The council meet as scheduled for January the 18th, 2024 at 1 p.m. via Zoom. And the Broadview Magazine, it's time to think about renewing your subscription. Thank you. Good morning and welcome. As you know, this is not Pastor Mandera. <laughs> He's, um, for those of you that are here for the first time, we'd like to welcome you here. And for the remaining of our church family, welcome. Um, some of you are aware, I think most, and maybe some of you are not, that there has been a death in Pastor Mandera's family. And he's away right now, um, back home with his family. And our condolences go to him and his family on their loss, as well as the family of Don McGilvery, who was a member, they're a member of our church, and Don, Don did our sound system for many years. So our uh, thoughts and prayers are with uh, both of those families this week. As we begin, we, uh, we acknowledge that the land on which we gather is the traditional and unceded territory of the Algonquin Nation. And just before I, I light the Christ candle, I would actually, I do this at home all the time, I'm going to just kind of do a, a quiet meditation. So as we begin the service, may I ask you to close your eyes and take a moment to breathe in the Holy Spirit. Take a moment to release any bad faults, any bad memories, any bad events that may have happened this week this month, this year, and I ask you to invite Lord Jesus Christ into your hearts. Amen. O oh God, may the blessing of Jesus Christ come to us, warming our hearts and brightening our way. May Christ our Savior bring life into the darkness of this world and to us as we wait for his coming. Amen. Our opening hymn, Joy to the World, Voices United, 59.
In worship, we remember that God is with us. In Jesus Christ, God reshapes our lives, past, present, and future. In this season, we await the birth of Jesus. We wait in expectation, preparing to rejoice in Jesus' name. We light these candles as signs of our shocking hope, peace, and fierce joy. May our lives shine with the fierce, tenacious joy of the light who lives in our hearts as we wait and work for the coming of God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. experience hardship and pain, yet we are called to witness to the persistent joy that sustains our life as God's people. Our prayers of adoration. God of light and love, we rejoice in your presence this day, for you look kindly on us, no matter how we came to be here. You bring order from chaos and call for justice for the vulnerable. You turn weeping into laughter, promising life made new. You redeem all that appears lost, giving each one a path and purpose. And so we come to you in joy, trusting you to bring peace and hope into these uncertain times. Receive our worship this day as we anticipate the difference your gifts will make to us through Christ, your Son, and our Savior. Amen. Together, we confess that our concerns are narrow, focused mostly on our lives. Opportunities to say thanks or to offer encouragement slip by. Anxiety turns us inward, and anger can make us lash out. Forgive us for neglecting the joy the heart of the Advent season. Turn our hearts back to you and inspire us with your love made flesh in Jesus Christ. Um, where are my children? Um, Where's all my children here today? How great it is to see everyone, and we have somebody new. Welcome. What is your name? Bella. Welcome, Bella. Welcome, Emily. Welcome, Lucy. Welcome, Wilson. Welcome, Lee. And welcome, Raymond. It's wonderful to have you guys here. And today we're talking about joy, which is our third. We have, we're awaiting for Christ in our Advent season. And today, we're talking about joy. And I bought a present here because it, I love presents. And presents bring me joy. So I'm going to pass this to you guys. And you can see if you can guess what's in here before we unwrap it. Go ahead and pass it down. And then we'll... I'll ask you guys what you think might be in there. There's something in there. Is it breakable? Uh, I think if you kind of went down like that and you threw the present, it might break. <laughs> hmm. Okay, just keep passing. So think about what's going to be in there. <sighs> so I'm going to ask in a second what you think it is. And Raymond, you can hold on to it, because since you're the last one, I'll get you to open it. Now, what do you guys think is in there? It's something, 
something to remind us about the coming of Jesus and, yes, Raymond? I'm going to let you guess and then we'll open it. What do you think? I think, is it um, a toy of Jesus? A Christmas tree? A Christmas tree? Anybody else have a guess? A cross. A cross. A cross. An angel? An angel. Anybody else with a guess? Those are all great guesses, and maybe somebody here is right. Raymond, can you open it up for me, please? Can you do it really, really fast? You don't have to be. I cannot believe how you're just trying to take it, like, ever so carefully. You don't have to save the ribbon or the paper. It's all good. So, I'm going to get you to open it, and then, whoa, what is that? A candle. A candle. Does everybody see? But besides the candle, what do candles do? Light things up. That's right. And this is a reminder, this light here shines in each one of us. The light of Christ is in us. And there's times where we have darkness. And we're just, our light is very, very dim. But it's important that we shine bright. And what are some ways that we can shine bright and shine the light of Christ in us and share with others? What could we be doing? Hmm? Be kind. Absolutely be kind. Anything else that we can be doing? Bella? Love your neighbor. I love that. <laughs> love your neighbor. Love yourself, right? First and foremost is to love yourself because if you don't love yourself, how are you supposed to love others, right? To love yourself so you can love others. Anything else? Oh, goodness, guys, what do we talk about in Sunday school? <laughs> what are some of the things that we do? Talk about you. We talk about Jesus to show our light. Yes, absolutely. Raymond. We read about God. So we read about God. We talk about Jesus. We sh we're loving to others. Yes, Bella. We pray. Absolutely. These are all ways that we can share our light with others. And when you do that, you know what's so exciting, guys? When you share your light with one person, guess what? A lot of times that person, their light is shining bright and they're sharing with another person. So instead of just having one person sharing the light of Christ and, and being kind and caring and loving, you're doing that to a second, another person. So now we have two people and they're sharing that. That's four people. We, those four people share to another four people and all of a sudden you show, we see everybody around being kind and caring and having the light of Christ in them and sharing with others. So let's try to remember that. That's so important, okay? Let's stand up and we're going to do a quick prayer here. We'll hold hands. Let's hold hands. Okay. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for sending Jesus. The light of the world. The light of the world. Help us to remember that hope. To remember that at Christmas time, at Christmas time and, always. and always, help us to share His light, share his light. With, those with those around us. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Now, uh, we will now enjoy the beautiful voices of our choir with their choir anthem, Joy, Advent Joy.
Wow, it sounds so different up here. You know, I'm talking about the light of Christ in each of us and sharing that. You know, you guys, oh, maybe I'll turn this way with, so you can hear me. Um, listening up here and listening to your voices and sharing the gift of music that you have. It's just thank you so much. How beautiful. It's like incredible. So thank you very much for sharing your gift of music and Sandra. Um, it was beautiful, breathtaking. That was, thank you. Our assurance of pardon. In Jesus Christ, we are part of God's new creation. God's love makes all things new. Know that you are forgiven by this great love. Now find the courage to forgive one another in Jesus' name. Amen. Our prayer for understanding. God of wisdom, shine the light of your truth on us as we listen for your word speaking in the scriptures. Open our hearts to receive that word which can change our minds and our lives through the grace of Jesus Christ, your living word. Our scripture readings is from Isaiah, chapter 61, verses 1 to 4. The year of the Lord's favor. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our Lord, to comfort all who mourn, the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to grant those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. The next reading is from Isaiah 61, verses 8 to 11. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrong. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their offspring shall be known among the nations, and their descendants in the midst of the peoples. All who seek them lack shall knowledge them, and they are an offspring that the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up. So the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. The next reading is from Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it.
Good morning. How's the sound coming through? Is that coming through all right? Good. I guess I get to do the gospel this morning. So our gospel this morning is from Gospel according to St. John, the chapter 1, beginning at verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, all that might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness to the light, about the light. And then beginning at, at verse 19. And this is the testimony of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed, I, I did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then are you, Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? So John the Baptist, he said, I am the voice of the one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Then why are you baptizing if you are neither Christ nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one who you, do, who you do not know. Even he who comes after me will strap those, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. So our text this morning is entitled, I am the light of the world. I don't know whether I want this light on or not, but we'll see. No, I don't want that light on. So the text is based on that passage that I just read to you from John. And we turn to John's gospel for a description of John the Baptist. A similar account to the the one that we looked at from Mark's gospel last week, but with a different, different emphasis. Just, just as an aside, I didn't write this sermon. Pastor Mandera wrote it, so I'm just the deliverer. John tells us that John the Baptist was a witness to the light. Again, from John's gospel that I just read a moment ago, chapter 1, beginning at verse 6, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. This gospel account tells us that there was a man by the name of John who was sent by God It also establishes John the Baptist's authority right from the beginning of the description of him and his ministry. John is not someone acting on his own authority. This is not someone who just one day felt like baptizing people and calling them to repentance and belief. No. John has been called by God to this work of being a pastor. The Welsh Congregationalist preacher D. Martin Lloyd-Jones said that the piece of advice he would give to anyone who wondered if he was called to ministry was, if there's anything else you can do, do it. Don't go into ministry. That's a little bit strange, isn't it? 
And he said that because of the seriousness of the call to ministry, no one should enter into it unless they are sure that they are called to it, and it's the only thing that they can do. Because God judges pastors more strictly, for pastors have been given a call to the preaching of God's word that not everyone has. And pastors must preach God's word alone, not their preferences and opinions, but what God has said, period. So John was called by God to be John the Baptist, to do the work that God had ordained him to do, to be a minister of the gospel. This is going to be important as we go along. And John was called to be a witness to the light. So you ask, what, what, what is a witness? A witness is someone who has reliable, first-hand, ascertainable facts about something. A witness is someone who can say, I was there. I have first-hand knowledge of this. I saw it happen. John was called by God to give reliable, first-hand, ascertainable facts about the light. John was there. He knew the light. He knew about the light. And he knew what the light was called to do. So he could be a witness to the light. In the 29th verse of the first chapter of John's Gospel, which we did not read this morning, I, I stopped at verse 28. For anyone who didn't understand who the light was through the imagery of the preceding text, it is made perfectly clear. Jesus is the light. So John, called by God, authorized by God, to be a pastor, to be a witness to Jesus, and especially who he is and all he would do. And the reason he was called to be a witness was so people would hear his testimony about Jesus and believe that Jesus is the promised Savior. We are all called to be witnesses to Jesus and his gospel, are we not? We are not all called to be pastors, but, when we, are, but we are all called to be witnesses. We did not know Jesus when he was on earth 2,000 years ago, but we have met him through the word and sacraments. We are witnesses to what God has said and convicted us to be the truth. We cannot say that we knew Jesus in Israel all those years ago, but we can say that we know him, and now that we have truly met him in the word and through sacraments, we know who he is and why he came. And we are called to be witnesses, like John the Baptist, to Jesus and his gospel, so people would hear our witness about Jesus. And if God is pleased, they will believe that Jesus is the promised Savior, the Christian's way to salvation, the Christian's way to be right with God. As Christians, we are called to be witnesses to Jesus and his gospel, not look at what Jesus did for me, but see who Jesus is and what he has done. While our personal testimony might be interesting, our call is to witness, to give the facts of Jesus, who he is and what he has done, and all that who believe will be saved. In Mark's gospel, Jesus said to the disciples, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Again, in Acts, Jesus said to the disciples, but you will receive power 
when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. We have been called by God to be witnesses to Jesus and his gospel, to the one way of salvation and those who have met Jesus and know who he is and what he has done to make all those who believe right with God. And John the Baptist was called by God to be a witness to Jesus and his gospel, to the one way of salvation and one who knew Jesus and knew who he was and why he came and what he would do to do and make all those who believe right with God. We are called to be holy as God is holy. We are, we are to strive toward keeping all of God's law and being pleasing in his sight in every way. Although we are forgiven for all our sins through Jesus' work, that is not an excuse for us to say we do not have to strive for holiness. We are still called to be holy and some today, like the Pharisees who went astray and have twisted and added to God's word, burdening people with things that God never commanded. And so today, we are to strive to be holy, to keep all of God's word and law. We are not to say it doesn't matter because Jesus has forgiven us. Yet we are not to add things to God's law that God never said or commanded. When we tell people who Jesus is and what he did, and they don't get it, are we disappointed? It should break our hearts. It should cause us to weep and cry out to God, open minds and hearts and eyes that they would believe. We are witnesses to, to the light. And the testimony of a true witness does not change the gospel message. We do not need to find gimmicks to lure people in and trick them into belief. We don't need to focus more on ourselves and on the felt needs of our neighbors. We need to tell people that they are at odds with God and the only way to be right with God is through believing that God came to earth in the person of Jesus, lived a perfect life under God's law, died for the sins of everyone, and rose from the dead and ascended back to heaven. We are witnesses to the light, and we, we who believe have met Jesus spiritually through the word and through the sacraments. We know who he is and what he has done we believe that he alone is the Christian's way to salvation. We repent of our sins and strive to grow in obedience to God in our faith. Do the people you know and love believe? Have you witnessed who Jesus is and what he has done for them? Let us pray. Holy Mystery God, we thank you for the witnesses in our lives that have pointed us to Jesus and his salvation. We thank you for causing us to believe and for calling us now to be witnesses to Jesus and his salvation. Fill us with the power of the Holy Spirit to be faithful servants who tell others who Jesus is and what he has done. Don't let us rest or be satisfied until all the world knows that Jesus is the Christ. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Thank you, Gary. I ask for everyone to please stand as we join together with our choir with our, me our message hymn. Angels from the Realms of Glory, Voices United 36.
ask you to please join in with me as we do our prayer of dedication. God of justice and joy, we bring our gifts to you in gratitude for your unfailing goodness to us. Bless these gifts and use them to create justice and bring joy into the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Our prayers, you, you, can, you can have a seat, <laughs> sorry. Thank you. Our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. Come, Christ Jesus, be our guest, and enter our lives today with your blessing. We are lonely for you and the peace you bring near to us in friendship and faithfulness so that in this season, which combines celebration in the face of uncertainty, we may know your presence and sing with all your people. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Come, Christ Jesus, be our guide and show us the way to wisdom and gratitude. We are thankful for the kindness we know in friends and good neighbors in warm houses and warm smiles, which hold off the darkness and fears for the future. Encourage us to reach out to those who need your embrace and ours, so that together we may sing to your presence. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Come, Christ Jesus, be our hope, and touch us with your healing and grace. We remember before you all those we know and those known to you alone who are living with loss or illness this season, those who face depression or discouragement, and all who will find it hard to be merry this year. Shine the light of your comfort into their lives as we sing of the hope that dawns in your love. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Come, Christ Jesus, be our King, and claim your rightful place in our hearts. Our world is struggling to find the justice and mercy you call for. Draw near to our leaders and all citizens working for peace and justice, and those striving to mediate or contain conflicts. Encourage honorable action and cooperation on all sides. Give hope to people under oppression and to those living with fear or hunger day by day. Hasten the day when the world's people will live as neighbors, reconciled in your truth and freedom. For the coming of this day, we will pray in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours forever and ever. Amen. Our benediction. Go with joy renewed this day, energized to share that joy with justice and generosity in the world God loves. And may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Before we do our closing hymn, I would just like to thank those that participated and helped with the service today. Thank you, Leanne, Tom, Helly, uh, Helen and Wally Mick, thank you, and to Gary McKay. And of course, our wonderful voices here, our choir and Sandra. So let's us all join in on our closing hymn. Let's please stand, hark the herald angels sing, Voices, Un voices United 48.
just before we do our postlude, I want to welcome everybody to come downstairs and join us all for a wonderful potluck luncheon. There's plenty, plenty of food. So I want to see each and every one of you downstairs after this, okay? Everybody, I'm counting right now, and that's how many I expect to see downstairs. So thank you.